What is up, San Antonio? What's going on, South Texas? Mikey Man is here, and I am the Acquired Taste. Joe Garcia, producing today's show. Joe, what's going on, my man? What's up, man? I'm excited to go ahead and be producing your inaugural premiere episode oh, of the Acquired Taste. And of course, leave it till today for my allergies to flare <laughs> up yet one more time. One more time. Hey, it wouldn't be San Antonio unless you had an allergy attack, right? Exactly. So I asked you for a bottle of water. Yeah, you did. Initially, it was yeah. water. Yeah, we're doing straight up bourbon right now. Yeah. <laughs> it is soothing the throat more than the Starbucks that I was having a few minutes ago. Yeah. But I'm excited about today for a variety of different reasons. And I know when it's our first show, we're going to have some technical difficulties. We're going to upload the show onto YouTube, YouTube later on. But right now we're live on Facebook. We're live on Twitter as well. It's a great thing because what we're trying to do, Joe, is we're trying to disrupt the marketplace that is sports talk radio in San yeah. Antonio. And what I mean by disrupt is I'm trying to take sports talk radio. We're trying to take sports talk radio to the 21st century. Yeah. It is 2023. It is not 1993. And because of that, we need to have a bigger presence in San Antonio when it comes to social media, when it comes to Twitter, when it comes to TikTok, when it comes to Facebook, Instagram, and all of that. San Antonio right now, does not have any local programming between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Yeah, they right? don't. Ticket 760, San Antonio Sports Star. And it's probably not going to be that case, or they're probably not going to have any local programming until next year. Yeah. So that being said, you and I have decided that we want to create a network where we can actually have sports talk radio done online yeah. to fill the gaps. And that's going to be what we're doing, fill the gaps. Yep, we're going to be filling the gaps with some quality programming and some familiar faces, which uh, I'm sure Mike will announce here yeah. as they start coming on board. Lots of familiar faces as we go along. Uh, the Fantasy Gods is coming back. So for those of you who remember the Fantasy Gods from a couple of years ago, Brandon Medina and I used to do that show Oh yeah, at ESPN San Antonio. And it was a very popular show. Very, very popular show. Then COVID happened. We were doing it from home and it kind of just evaporated. Yeah. But so many people love to show about fantasy football, how to draft, how to set your lineups and all of that. Brandon is, is going to come and join our network beginning the first Sunday of August. Nice. And it's remarkable because Brandon Medina is so talented at what he does. It is a damn shame that he is not on the radio here Monday through Friday. Now, he does work for Southwest ISD, so he yeah. has a good gig. Uh, he's a Southwest High School graduate, graduated from Texas Tech. So I am very proud to be working with him all over again. We have some other names of people who want to come in and join the network. We're still going to have those conversations. Yeah. But right now we're going from about 12 to 12.45, 12 to 1. This may evolve in the next 30 days into a two-hour show. Maybe we do a morning show. A lot of it's going to be dependent on the number of people who subscribe. 200 people subscribed to our YouTube page. That's great. In the last 36 hours. And it was just your one video. It was just one video. And keep this in mind. Ticket 760 has 175 people who subscribe to their channel. Wow. That's how little attention is being done towards social media when it comes to sports talk in San Antonio. But this is beyond sports talk. We're also going to be talking about life, about love, about money, how to make it. Uh, how to be better at uh, being a, a better father, a better son, all sorts of things that we're going to get on. So we're going to have lots of guests and things like that. We also picked up our first sponsor. Oh, nice. We've been talking to sponsors, potential sponsors all week long. And uh, one that's going to jump on is a good friend of mine, Jeff Garcia yeah. from Lockdown Spurs. So the Lockdown Spurs podcast and network is sponsoring this show now. So without further ado. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring in Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs and Ken's Five. Jeff, what's going on, my man? How are you feeling? This new endeavor you're doing. Uh, you know, I was excited about this. A little sneak peek behind the scenes. Mike uh, has been coming to me to talk to me about hashing this out. And uh, I'm very calculating approach. No, not Jimenez. Jimenez wanted to go dive in nose first in the uh, shallow end and let's roll. But I'm excited for him. The moment he told me that it was going to be a, a network, uh, I, I was just, I mean, he, words cannot describe how excited I was for him when he told me his grand vision. So I'm glad to be uh, on his inaugural show. 
uh, to talk sports, talk Spurs. I mean, the list goes on and on. And just to be clear, Mike, uh, the Locked On Network is not sponsoring this. Okay. It's only Locked On Spurs. Locked yeah. On Spurs. There you go. So, right, yeah. you know, you talk about the division. Yeah. That vision came about because people reached out and were very, very adamant about wanting more local programming in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And I get the feeling that the local radio stations either don't have the money to modernize what they do right. or don't have the desire to do so. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I was like, why can't we do this? Sure. And I think the difference is, is that radio stations are run by people who are on the radio. They do radio things. They have radio careers. Right. And this network that we're starting over here, we're IT people. We're IT yeah. and content people. You got one of the and best in the it, business behind the scenes right now. Yeah, exactly. And we get to go directly to the consumer, cut out the middleman when it comes to that. And the fact of the matter is, is that, yeah, we had a technical glitch today with YouTube. We have a brand new YouTube page. And as we were going on air at 12 o'clock, we got the error message. So we'll get that fixed. That's not a big sure. deal. I was expecting that today. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we're on Facebook, the fact right. that we're on Twitter, and we're going to see how many views that we get because of this, it's going to be pretty interesting. People reaching out also saying that there needs to be more Hispanic representation in sports talk radio here in San Antonio. Uh, the city is 64.3% Hispanic. Right. Um, I want to let people know, I don't believe that I was let go from my past job because I was Hispanic. I don't buy that. Not going to play the race card. But I will say this, though. It is true that there needs to be more representation in San Antonio. And we need to have more talent that comes from our area. So I'm mm -hmm. super excited, Jeffrey, to be part of the, the inaugural show that we have today. Uh, I promise that my voice will get better mm -hmm. as the week goes on. Um, that bourbon is going to help, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't normally do that. You know, I don't normally drink and go normally on. Normally, he that's, doesn't do that's that. that I don't normally do the Ron Burgundy. <laughs> scotch, 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 scotch. Uh, but it did help my voice, and I don't. I feel fine. It's my voice, and for those of you who followed my show, you would know that every right. two or three months or so, something like this flares up. But let's yeah. get into it. Let's get into the, the conversations at hand today. You're going to help me with the heavy lifting, both both of you guys, Joe and Jeff, because uh, my voice is kind of going in and out. But that being said, tonight, game five of the NBA Finals, yes, it should wrap up tonight. Okay. Sure. And I feel so excited for the Denver Nuggets and their fans. Right. I called it Nuggets in five. Yes, you and did. so many people gave me crap when the Heat went out there to Denver and <laughs> stole game two. They're like, ha ha, Jimenez, it's going to be a six or seven game series. Right. The Heat might actually take it. And the very last take I took, I made on radio was that this game two mm -hmm. last week proved to me that the series was going to be over in five. That was a double down right there because it had to be perfect for Miami to win. Right. Miami, if they're not perfect, they're not going to win. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's done. And it's, it's going to be done tonight. And Joker mm -hmm. is going to be named finals MVP. Yeah, you hit on the nail. There's so many things that have to go right versus not so many things that have to go right for Denver to uh, pick up the W in any of these games this series. You know, if, if Joker's not having a good game, well, they got so many weapons that can pick up the slack. You know, Jimmy Butler hasn't been Jimmy Butler uh, that we saw early in the playoffs. He's not been playoff Butler. So if he's not going, then forget about it. You know, the rest of the wheels come off that train over there in Miami. But you know, you look at Denver, and I'm ecstatic for them. They're they're going to join the Spurs as one of the few ABA teams to carry a title. Yeah, uh, you know, the obviously the Spurs have gone five. Denver is about to get their first. Right. I don't think New Jersey got one. I've heard somebody can correct well, me. Indiana about that. hasn't either. And Indiana has it is so that and also too the love that Mike Malone has for Greg Popovich. They never worked together but he never shies away from complimenting uh, Pop. And, of course, how could we forget the Joker? I mean, the Joker openly admits that he patterned his game off Tim Duncan, that he borrowed from Boris Diaw, that he borrowed from LaMarcus Aldridge. He really, really connects to the Spurs, and you see that in his game. So, yeah, I'm excited for them, and uh, Denver's going to have a party uh, either tonight or very soon. You know what the great thing is is that you hear from Nuggets fans. You know, you go on Twitter, yeah, and you hear from Nuggets fans just talking about this final series, mm -hmm. 
and they even catch on to it. The fact that it's an international flavor, right? That their big three is international, just like the Spurs. They have their Tim, they have their Tony, sure. they have their Manu, and that's so exciting for that team. And as Spurs fans, we should be excited for this team because they pattern themselves after the Spurs. I mean, Jamal Murray said he patterned himself after Tony Parker, for right. crying out loud. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> they're being very forthcoming as to how much they respect the Spurs dynasty, the Spurs right. era. And these guys are locked down for a while. They're going to be there a problem go. in the NBA for a mm -hmm. good while. But I got to ask you about Joker because Joker's just, I believe, 28 years old. Right. And if you take a look at his career, and where he is on the hierarchy mm -hmm. of centers in the NBA. I'm looking at him, and I think to myself, he's already top 10. But if mm -hmm. you look into the top five, top six, yeah. top seven, it's funny because he's not number one because, you know, number one will right. forever be Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, you know, you have players like Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, and he's not close mm -hmm. to them yet. But maybe he's in that second tier. Maybe that second tier of Shaq, Hakeem, David Ooh. Robinson. And then where are you going with this team? Is he in the second tier? Oh man. Okay. If, if there, if now we're gonna just take that second tier and then rank it within the second tier, he's still at the bottom of that second tier. You know, you sure he's he's having a great uh, career so far, uh, but you look at Dream, you look at uh, Robinson, you look at Shaq. You know, if we're just going to go pound for pound resumes and what they've done, you know, Joker's good, but he, has, he isn't there yet. You hit the nail on the head earlier. You said this team is still young. So he has time to maybe eke his way up that second rung and to get up there close to the top 10. Uh, so, no, no, no. You look at, um, well, we'll take Shaq, for example, you know, dominant force, you know, three, won three in a row. Yeah. Uh, finals MVP, you know, uh, the, the multiple all-stars. Not to say, again, that Joker can't amass that, you know, but he's going to take time. Robinson, you know, you know, I dare – I always tell this, Terry, all these kids out there that didn't grow up in the era, the 90s that you and I did, uh, to go look at what Robinson did on an average night. It was just ridiculous. I've never seen numbers like that ever. I mean, you put Robinson in today's era of the NBA, I think he dominates even more so than – Giannis or Joker. But my point is, is that I don't know if he's there yet with Robinson either. You know, multiple won two titles, uh, you know, defensive player of the year, scoring champion, block champion, uh, rebounds champion, scored 71 points in a game. Whereas of right now, Robinson still has the edge over Joker. I don't think that the divide is that great. I, I think it think is just simply because the defensive end, the defensive the, end is the huge. The defensive end when you make 10 all NBA defensive teams. Okay, I'll give you that. Uh, that's that's the, huge. On, it's not a give. The, it's huge. On the offensive side of the ball, though, I haven't seen a big man pass the way that Jokic does ever. No, yeah. And granted, ever. two different eras, two different eras, too. And Robinson grew up in the era of four down, stay in the post, don't right. you dare leave the paint. Nowadays, it's different. Your, your bigs are encouraged to leave the paint. We're, Spurs are about to get one that's going to go just bust all rules in a few weeks as Wimbayama. So that's a big right there that can do it all. But and my all, point is you and, I, you and I talk all the time about how no one seems to put the correlation between David Robinson and Victor right. Wimbayama because yeah, there is, close. There is close. a like, okay, there was a play I saw on TikTok. So Last night I was on TikTok and I've been trying to describe this play for the longest time. I uh, was doing my show last week and I was watching, mm -hmm. uh, or a couple of weeks ago, and I was watching um, Wemby in action. He was in the semis of the playoffs right. there in France. And there was this one play where this one guy acted like he dunked on him, but he didn't. He didn't dunk on him. Like Wemby let him go, right? It wasn't yeah. even his guy. So he, he jawed at Wemby. Wemby brings the ball up the court. Oh, I He's saw doing that, yeah. these crossover moves, yeah. very reminiscent of Tony Parker. I Seven that, foot yeah. five, doing these crossover moves, makes his way over onto the elbow, then starts to back a, a player up, like you know, mm -hmm. like a post up type move. Spins around like Nowitzki, <laughs> gets hacked, yeah, and won from sixteen feet. It was a remarkable sequence of about fifteen seconds there. 
and, and, and that's just scratching. Going. Yeah, that's just scratching the surface of what he's done, he's done so far in France. Let's put underscore that in France. No, we'll in see France, that translates to the NBA. Better. Oh my God! Don't do that. I am don't doing that. Don't all the French players. Don't. I am do doing it. that. No, I want to no. see if he, if he could do that on the NBA stage. Dude, Giannis says easier to score in the U.S. Oh, for sure. Nikola Jokic sure. says easier to score in the U.S. Absolutely. But I want to see if the, the, the X factor easier to score in the U.S. I want to see the if he can handle the 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 other side of the coin, and that is the target on his back from not just French league players, but from the best players. <clears throat> excuse me, from around the world right. on the NBA court. From you know, you know, you you know, you can't tell me that anybody's going to want to get one on him the moment he steps on that floor. Who I bet you there's probably be players out there that are going to say who's going to be the first one to, to posterize Wemby and be on. Oh, the it's going to happen. That's it's going to happen. happen. And and the fact of the matter is, is that one of the things that I think we're not seeing when it comes to Wemby, which by the way, Wemby's going to be drafted by the Spurs in ten days. Super yep, exciting times. Here. By the way, the T-shirt I'm wearing is my lucky T-shirt because I bought this. Before going to the Rube Pub the night of the draft, okay, of the lottery, rather. So this is my lucky Spurs shirt. But that being said, you know, you look at Victor Women. I, I, I thought you were going to say that the bourbon next to you was your lucky <laughs> item. Okay, first of all, I've had maybe <laughs> just enough to clear the throat, okay? Did I gargle with it? I may have. I heard it. Yes. Everybody, I'm, everybody, I, I heard him gargle with it. Yeah. Again, it was done for medicinal purposes only. Wait medicinal people yeah it's different <laughs> it's different but you know it's funny because you start thinking about victor Wembanyama. we weren't even going to go yeah. in this direction but let's go no, we weren't. yeah yeah um by the way this show acquired taste is sponsored by locked on spurs talking to jeff garcia yeah. from locked on spurs i follow him on spotify daily content when it comes to your san antonio spurs uh he's an insider he knows his stuff jeff garcia from locked on spurs and, and can, can, can I dovetail on that real fast? And again, I, yeah. Jimenez, you've known me for years now, our producer, yeah. Joe, he's known me for years. I rarely, if I ever, ever, ever toot my horn. Heck, when I left News 4 to San Antonio, to Ken's 5 San Antonio, I didn't really say anything until months later. My point is, is this, you talked about Hispanic representation. Dare I say I'm the only Hispanic beat writer that's been on two of the major San Antonio outlets. So you want representation, Jimenez brings it to you right here on Acquired Taste. Very nice. Very nice. Let, let's get into this Wemby thing because there was one aspect that I don't think people understand yet or wrap their heads around. Mm -hmm. um, I was online yesterday. I was on YouTube just kind of looking up stories about Victor Wembanyama, And there were these reporters who were out following him over the past yeah. couple of years. And they were asking the question, what is the one thing that will surprise NBA fans and will surprise Spurs fans about Victor Wembanyama, And everyone said the exact same thing. How pissed off and competitive he gets. That he looks like a nice guy. Mm -hmm. That he might have that Mamba mentality. That he like might that. have that Jordan killer instinct to go along with the alien type of <laughs> of, of, yeah. of game that he has and that's super exciting because what I don't want I want the moment that Wemby gets posterized for him to come back down and posterize that guy back and it's so exciting Spurs is going to draft this guy in 10 yeah. days yeah yeah look I spoke to a French uh, beat writer uh, from uh, the Parisian on well today's episode of Lockdown Spurs so again if you want to check it out it's available right now and I asked him the same thing, but in the reverse. I, I said, I asked him, I go, hey, you know, Tony Parker, he's huge in France. Do you think Wemby's star will outshine Parker's star? And for in France, he right. said, absolutely. He goes, it's probably there already. So wow. I mean, th that, that, that's how big of a uh, star he is just in his home country. Uh, you know, Parker has sung his praises. I had an article about that on Ken's, on, um, on the outlet I write for, on Ken's Five. And Parker saying, hey, he thinks that Wimby can be even better than Tim Duncan, if not match it. So, and, and that, that's that's what worries, worries me the most, Jimenez, if he doesn't live up to that hype. Like, I feel like his that hype bar is so high that any little inch away from that 
hype. Oh, you see, he was overblown. You see, you know, Spur, you know, they got some a good player, not that generational player. That's why don't we look at it this way? What if he's 80% that? What Sorry? if he's 80% of the hype? Because if he's 80% of the hype, that's two or three championships here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I look at it a different way, but if but those who are the generational talents, they don't come around very often. And typically the generational talent does achieve what they need to achieve. Yeah. The only time it doesn't happen is when it's because of injury. So if you go generational talents, you're looking at Lou Alcindor, who became Kareem yeah. Abdul-Jabbar. He exceeded the expectations. Um, you know, I don't know if you would, you would consider Michael Jordan. Uh, Michael Jordan was the number three overall pick back in 84. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, is he, he generational was... if two other people were picked ahead of him? Uh, but Hakeem was considered to be generational. Mm -hmm. Hakeem is one of an all-time great. I would yep. say that out of the last... 40 years, the only two that really didn't do it that were supposed to be generational were Ralph Sampson, but Ralph Sampson was uh, injury prone. And then you have Zion Williamson, and right now Zion is kind of just, you know, he plays well when he's out there. It's just he's not out there very often. We think we, we, we might know what's causing the distractions by now already. We're not yeah, paying attention. Women weaken the legs. Media. Women weaken yeah. the legs. The legs. The legs are gone for other reasons, but – yeah, you know, you look you look at the generational players, well, quote unquote generational players that were ahead before when Bayama, there really hasn't been one to this level. I was asked that recently, like who who do you think was the last generational player? I threw in Zion. Like I thought maybe Zion, you know, because yeah, of his eyes Zion. and his build, and it was him. But going past that, you know, Paolo didn't come out with that that label on him. No. Now who knows who knows what's gonna happen with John Morant? You know, his star looks like he could have been that rise, kind of very similar to a Jordan, you know, picked later in the draft, and then his star just took off. And then, oh, all-time greatest, you know, could Jaw go that route if his gets his life and his act together? Um, so maybe you could throw him in there. But as far as out of college or into the NBA draft, generational, no. I mean, Wemby seems to be it. And you brought up a good point, his – physicalness you know can will he be the next hopefully he won't be the another Ralph Stampson or a Greg Oden that's what I'm worried about when you look at players like like uh John Morant no one thought he was going to be generational mm -mm. he was just no number two overall pick in the draft mm -hmm. right and there's different drafts out there a lot of people come out and say well I mean look at like Ola Candy look at like Anthony Bennett no one right. considered them to be generational players mm -hmm. in fact there is some drafts right now. Look at the draft that's going to go on next week. Brandon Miller, Scoot Henderson, Victor Wembanyama would have been number one in the last three or four picks, the drafts, yeah. most definitely. But let's go ahead and get into uh, another topic involving, possibly involving the Spurs, or at least a Spurs fan favorite. Okay. Uh, rumors over the weekend that Patty Mills declined his, mm -hmm. his contract option with the Brooklyn Nets. Right, and he was set to make about six point two million. And now he's going to become a free agent. And correct me if I'm wrong. When we were on our Zoom earlier, when I was talking to you about this, mm -hmm. and I said, "Hey, we should bring him back." Right? Did you or did you not roll your eyes? I rolled my eyes. Why? You want to? I feel like you want to move forward with this core. You, you okay? Know, I love Patty. I love Patty. I think he's good. But I don't think, and I know the shooting and all that good stuff and the whole corporate knowledge that he's going to bring. Defensively, he's still a liability. This team was horrific de defense last season. On the perimeter, they were bad. Uh, how many times did we see a game last night where the opposing team broke their, their team record of threes made or threes attempted or uh, field goal shooting? Uh, Patty won't help that. Now, if he's okay becoming like a player coach, you know, minimal time on the court, you know, only when needed, maybe. But I, I just think Trey Jones needs to get the bulk of that playing time. Blake Wesley needs to get the bulk of playing time. Your Malachi's need to get the bulk of the playing time. And who knows what the Spurs may do after pick number one if they trade back into that first round, if you know what I mean. Scoot, right. scoot, scoot. So, you know, I, I love, again, it's nothing against Patty, you know, great player, helped win some titles here in San Antonio. But, you know, there's Chris Paul, 
you know, I, I would lean more towards Come that way. On, you know? dude. I would Seriously. Lean more that way. Don't make me. I didn't say. I wouldn't say for sure. At the, at the screen right now. Dude, if Patty Mills you, wants you, to come you, back you to might get Antonio, more bourbon in you first. If Patty Mills wants to come back to the Spurs, he should come back to the Spurs just because he wants to. He should be able to show up at the AT&T Center, just knock on the door, or the new let facility. Guess, by let me guess, you want his jersey to be retired in. too, right? You want yes, I do. To be retired? I, I do. do. We've yeah. already set the precedent. If Bruce Bowen has his jersey no. up there retired, if other players like Johnny no. Moore have, have their jersey retired, Patty Mills no. has an argument. Robert Ory has an argument. But that being yeah. said, Patty Mills is forever welcome. This guy shot 41.5% from three last year. 41.5%. What do we need? We need shooters. And this is a shooter that can come in, and if Trey Jones comes back, train Trey Jones to be a good point guard, either as a spark plug off the bench. He is a good point guard right now. I think he's a good point guard right now. He just he's needs an some okay fine. point guard. He's an okay he's point a, guard. He, he needs Dude, fine if, if you were to rank the top 32 point guards in the NBA, or top 30 or whatever it is, uh, Trey Jones would not be in the top 15. I had him as my most improved player for the Spurs last year. Well, because no one improved. I mean, mm -hmm. well, there you go. It was a 22 and 60 season. For a but, moment there, I thought Jakob Jakob was going to get it before he got dealt. I mean, that's another player the Spurs could always bring back too. He's a free agent too. Yep. The Spurs got to spend money on somebody is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. They got to spend money on somebody because the new collective bargaining rules come out and say that if you are going to – get your share of the luxury mm -hmm. tax proceeds. You need to spend X amount of money. Last year, the Spurs right. did not spend as much as, as what would be needed this year. So the Spurs need to sign somebody, whether it be Chris Paul, Patty Mills. They got to sign somebody. They can't just nickel and dime their way and just like, you know, hold the money in their pockets because well, that does not make any financial sense. Well, I mean, again, that, obviously that's going to come sooner than later. You know, I think teams can start negotiating early as next week. I think right. not sign, just negotiate. So we'll see what's going to happen. You know, expect those rumor mill posts to start popping up everywhere and, you know, people going crazy about it. You're starting to see it now, especially with Chris Paul, um, him likely being gone from the Suns. But look, you're, you're San Antonio Spurs and you're the fans. You, you're loving this situation this team is on. They got a boatload of money. They had a lot of draft capital. They got a lot of young players that, yes, Jimenez, they can still flip. They can still flip. Don't get too attached to these young players quite yet. I got gotcha. you. Know, the closest gotcha. one maybe is Sohan. That's the closest, in my opinion. But um, look at he met us. You okay there? Oh, up a you, I think I think that's an excuse just for you to get more bourbon in you. I think you just fake a cough and then you go. I'm gonna bring this bourbon back in. See, here it comes. Let's see how it is. Let's see how it is. <laughs> but anyway, people. no, 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 no. Um, uh, if, if you look at this uh, the, the this first team heading into the draft, uh, I think right now, if they don't make any other major moves on draft night, this team could be plug and play with Victor right now. I don't see any major moves that they need to do. Um, if they were to run it back next season with just Trey Jones and don't upgrade that position, I'd be okay with that. I think that's fine. I don't, I don't think it's a you know like a horrific avenue to explore because you have. Malachi, you have point guard sometimes Sohan, who was running the point for years, so he's been in the last. You're naming a bunch gym. of players who can't shoot, dude. You're naming a bunch of players who can't shoot. That's why I'm an advocate of giving two years, twenty million to a two Patty years. Mills. Two years. He's 33 years old. Two years, twenty million. No more than that. No more than that. Ten million a what about, year. What, what about exploring that Fred Van Vliet? It's going to cost too much, man. I don't know if the Spurs can afford it. They're fine. The Spurs can't afford it. But Wimby they, wants they, to win now. Wimby wants to win now. Okay. So okay. let's give him a chance. I mean, show I, him, a, show I, him I, this I, team is wrong. aggressive enough to put Vliet it together to around Spurs. him. Van Vliet came to the Spurs. I'd be okay with it. I'd be okay with it. I mean, I, I would I would convince myself that it's a good deal. Uh, but the Spurs, as you've mentioned, will have a lot of, lot of, a lot of draft capital that they either have to mm -hmm. spend or trade. And... That I understand, but when it comes to Patty Mills, though, the corporate knowledge, the understanding of Pop, to be able to tran translate what Pop is saying mm -hmm. to the players. Pop coming in at 75 years but, old. But, but, no, no, right it, just feels like you're, it just feels like you're putting the training wheels back on this team when they need to start flying. That's what it feels like. 
You're just going to reapply those training wheels again. You need veterans. And not... You need veterans. If they're going to win now, you need right veterans. Now. They have McDermott. They have, as of right now, Diang. I don't know. He'll be back. Um, Dude, every time I, I talk to you on air, you mention Gorgie. You, because, you have, like, a love for him. Not that I have but a love I for him, but the players, I cannot explain the players it. spoke I cannot explain highly it. about him last year. They p- spoke highly about him. They called him uncle. They called him how he's a, he's a great <laughs> locker room presence. They loved him. They loved him. I'm not saying he's oh, he's adequate on the court, but if it's just a veteran presence, and what better veteran presence than having an international big when you're about to get an international big in a They're few They're not the same. To help. Dude. I'm not saying they're Victor, the same. Victor I'm saying Wim- is more Patty Mills than he is Gorgie Jang. I didn't hear you say that again. I said Victor Wembanyama is more Patty Mills than he is Gorgie Jang. If we're just talking about veteran presence, regardless of position, he, that's all I'm talking about. I mean, just somebody who's international been there, too, my man. I understand that. I understand that, but I just don't. I want to see the kids fly by themselves. I'm tired of them leaning on this, this, uh, these training wheels. Let let them go. <laughs> Uh, did you see that viral video of Patty Mills over the weekend? I did. I did. I thought at first I thought that was you in the court. <laughs> I thought that was you hitting those threes. I, I, I'm going to give a story about that in a moment, real fast. Uh, I knew it was coming. The, yeah, the, the, the more I set you up there, didn't I? You did. Viral moment was this weekend. Patty Mills posted on Twitter a video of him knocking down 33 pointers yeah, in 60 crazy. seconds. Ridiculous. Crazy. And he challenged people to say, "Can you do the same or better?" I will retweet your video. I will post your video yeah, yeah. if you do. And you're over here saying two years, 20 million is too much. For yeah, a in a, in a, in a court by degrees. himself, in a court by himself, no defenses, no nothing, probably no shot clock. So, okay. He, he, uh, no shot clock. <laughs> in a minute. Come on, man. Uh, no, that was, fu- that was funny. So, my moment when it comes to three-point shooting. I was at Fiesta, Texas probably okay. about 15 years ago. And you you go outside and you have that uh, that basketball not the not the one with the with the wonky rim but the one yeah. where you actually had to do the three point shootout. It, it was a it was like the three point challenge, right? And dude, I knocked them all down except for the last dude. one. Oh, I cleared man. every rack. No, every rack there were three racks, but I cleared the first two racks yeah. and three of the four of the last one. The last one for the grand prize rattled in and out. What was I the grand prize? About it. What would you have won? It was like a PS3 or a PS2. Oh, nice. Uh, that, that, whatever nice. whatever the big yeah. PlayStation was at the time. You would have traded it in for more bourbon. That is true. Yeah, that you would have said, I can exchange this out. Today, the first episode of MJ Acquired Taste, and I'm over here drowning. In Losing it up. <laughs> Losing it up. Dude, I've had approximately one drink, okay? Can, can, drink. can we tell them how, how like nervous you were before? You yeah, go ahead. Drink. Go ahead. Yeah. So Jimenez is over there, you know, trying to, he's really concerned about his throat, like super concerned. He he asks or the producer, Joe, you know, do you have anything to drink? Can we help? Joe tries to help him. And mind you, I'm obviously I'm on location somewhere else. So I, all I'm doing is hearing everything that's going on in the background. And then all I hear is Joe go, do you want to, you want to run one? I went, oh, and so now I'm thinking, oh, oh, okay, I know what they're doing. So I hear a bottle clink. I hear glasses clink. And then I started hearing Jimenez in the macro, mind you, going, oh, that's much better. Oh, that's way <laughs> better. That's way better. So then he comes back to his seat that you're seeing on right now as he gargles bourbon. Um, and he, he's sitting there and he take, he goes, hey, Jeff, check this out. How do I sound now? He's all raspy. He takes a swig. Hey, Jeff, how do I sound now? Obviously, he sounds better. So then Jimenez says, hey, I don't know if I should leave the bottle on here. And me and Joe go, no, you leave the bottle on the desk. You want yeah. everybody to know that you are just chilling. You're having a good time. It's all oh, fun right here. On, it's right here on the uh, acquired taste. What, are, what is that anyway? I couldn't read it. What, what are you drinking there? It's a uh, Buffalo Trace straight bourbon. Uh, first of all, I, I've had approximately I went by, one But how much more time do we, do we need before you're tanked and everybody sees this? Oh, before I'm tanked? Well, I didn't yeah. have breakfast, so it might be a while. Might not be that okay. long. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'm I'm a good drunk. I'm a happy drunk. I'm not oh, drunk now. You know that. You've seen me drunk. I've seen you, you you've drunk. You've been with yes, me at Denny's at a at a four a.m. one yes, time, b- barely hanging onto a fork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
you, me, and Pledger. Wild nights, yep. wild nights. But, okay, so Patty Mills is a no-go for you. Uh, I want him back. That's the moral of the story is that I want him back. I'm going to bring Joey in real fast. Joe? Yeah. I, I, I want you to, uh, you know, tilt the balance in one way or the other. Yay or nay, Patty Mills? Patty Mills, absolutely. Wouldn't you want Patty Mills to retire as a San Antonio Spurs if you can if you can get him at a reasonable price? Bring him back. People are here in San Antonio. They love them some Patty Mills. But I'm going to flip the script here. Jeff isn't really a Patty fan. He loves him some Gorgie Dang for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know. know. He loves okay. him some Gorgie Dang. Y'all making that bigger than what it a is. Gorgie Dang I just said a veteran presence. That's all I well, said, a veteran well, presence. Jeff is enamored with Gorgie Dang. So I'm going to flip the presence. Script. And what I suggest is what if you could have either Patty Mills or Chris Paul? Which of the, the two would you rather have if you can get them? Spurs fans Ooh, love them both. I, they love Patty, but they also you see, are I, 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 disagree about with you. I disagree with you there because I've seen the other side. I've seen a lot of Spurs fans are anti-Chris Paul, not big fans of him. So uh, I, I think I think the fan base is split 50-50 with Chris Paul. Obviously, you know, a lot of feeling, lovey feels for Patty Mills, bring him back, you know, so obviously going to sway that way. But I, I would go with Chris Paul just because I want that dog. I want that dog out there. I want that <laughs> but he can't dog stay out healthy. there. Hey, look, that's what you got. Trey Jones will be learning under him for X amount of time before that injury happens. And you got I, I know what it was, Joe and, and 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 Mike. I like that dog in 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 Chris Paul. And I think this team needs a little bit more bite to it. All right. All right. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Uh the thing about though, Trey Jones just he just needs to work on his shooting. He wasn't a shooter in college. He isn't a shooter in the NBA. Yeah. He is a free agent. So but but see, know. but see, but that's a good thing. See, I think that's a good thing. And not to say he's a bad shooter, but that because no, he, he doesn't need shooter. his touches. He's a bad that he doesn't need, shooter. That he's he doesn't need his shooter. touches. You want those extra touches to go to your heavy hitters. You want a guy who's going to facilitate. He has one of the best assist to turnover ratios in the he league does. last year. You know, that's what I want. I just want somebody who's consistent, reliable, dependable, and has the best ability that's availability. And that is... Trey Jones right now. I, I want Trey Jones back. Okay. I want him back because of what you said there, the assist to turnover ratio. Yeah. But we can't have so many people out there who can't make a bucket. Now he can make a runner. He can make layups. He can do a little scoop from time to time. But outside of 12 feet, chipping yeah. paint off the rim. That's just what he does. Okay. And I just want that to be better. Um, switch topics real fast. By the way, this sure. is the MJ Acquired Taste shout out to be more than 175 people who are watching right now. We're keeping count. Probably would be higher if my voice was there, but uh, <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being carried by Jeff Garcia. Joe, do you, got, you got any more liquor? Can we, can, we, can we get some more in him? He's running low right there, Joe. Well, that's going to be great content there because if we do like a special on draft night and we just have yeah. like a bottle of booze, I'm down sure. for that. Why not? I mean, it's, it's the most anticlimactic Spurs draft, but sure. No, it no, it couldn't be because what if the Spurs trade back in? It's us drinking, that. hoping that that would happen. Can you imagine I, that, dude? I'm ah. going to say that there's a sixty percent chance that the Spurs yeah. are going to trade back into the first round. I, I believe that. that sure. I believe that the odds are sure. higher of it being a yes than a no. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Then you start popping. Hey, yeah, it is an anticlimactic. I, I think I told you or Joe this on Lockdown Spurs before. I said all what what Holt and Pop and RC and Brian Rush should do is just give the card already to Adam Silver and just say, "Hey, post this on NBA social media. <laughs> Our pick is in already. What, what are we waiting for?" Uh, you say anticlimactic. I'm sorry. Um, I'll take it all day, every day. Oh no, I will too. I will too. I mean, I mean, start partying right now. Bring back Fiesta, you know, next week when the uh, draft week is here. Okay, so Drew reaches out to us on Twitter. Says you bring in Patty, you bring in the temptation for Pop to give him futile minutes that would go to developing talents like Malachi Branham or Blake Blake Wesley, who would remain on the team if it's Mills, not like vets like DJ or CP3. Basically saying that if you bring Patty Mills over, you bring the temptation of having. Pop rely on 
yeah. veterans like he did back in the day with Bryn Forbes and Marco Bellinelli. Yeah. He fell in love with the veterans. Mike Finley. Remember that debacle? Yeah. Mike yeah. But, but my thing is, is that this team is not going to suck next year. You develop players on a team that's going to suck, which is why the Spurs out there were out there developing yeah. their players last year. I believe, yeah. and I don't care what Vegas thinks or Bovada Sportsbook or FanDuel coming out saying that the Spurs will, will more than likely have 35 to 36 wins. I don't buy any of that. This is a 46 to 48 win team as it stands right now, not even including whether or not they get a second first round draft pick, not even including if they get a stud. Yeah player in free agency they're going to get 46 wins that's where a patty comes into play patty would be a would have been useless last season but he's useful in a season like this one coming up because you're going to want to win some of these games and again i'll be fine with that if he took a bubble season patty remember bubble season yeah yeah he stayed on the sideline with the clipboard and he was with the coaching staff i will be okay with that but not to give minutes that should be going to this young kid yes even to trey jones who doesn't shoot the ball well but again i'd rather see that that's 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 like for me right there you know you that's again it's nothing against patty yeah you know, like you're right i think he will get his jersey retired because of the standard the precedent set but no no i think they can they can search better options out there talking to jeff garcia from locked on spurs they are a proud sponsor of the MJ Acquired Taste. This is our first episode coming at you from west northwest side of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. uh, I like it because it's close to my home. I'm really excited about that. Joe Garcia does a fantastic job putting this together. Right now, we're live on Twitter. We're live on Facebook. Soon to be on YouTube. Soon to be on YouTube. We are at 200 subscribers, which I find to be remarkable. Good job. I want to get into more about that in a moment, but let's uh, kind of switch gears a little bit. Kind of stay within the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, Zion Williamson had a bad weekend. <laughs> Zion, Zion. weekend. Let's get Joey. Like the the nightmare from every guy's nightmare right there. Oh, I mean, man, dude. Yeah, so, so if you guys don't know the story, Zion Williamson proudly announced that he and his girlfriend are expecting a baby. And then Drama. minutes later on social media, there is a porn star coming out named Mariah <laughs> Mills who says... Baby, you never said that you had a girlfriend. You never said any of this and has been posting what she claims to be um, mm -hmm. text message threads between her and Zion Williamson, where Zion's saying, how much money do I need to send you? How much do I, you know, do I need to get you a place? And all of that stuff, Zion Williamson. And then Mariah Mills, this uh, uh, apparently a porn star, coming out and saying, it was okay for him to be with other people. I just didn't want him having kids. Like, that was too far. Oh, he, she yes, was okay. he, had the, he had the hall pass. She was okay being <laughs> the side chick. She had the hall pass. He had the hall pass there. Yeah, wow. Apparently yeah, not, yeah, I, though. I mean, man, Zion, well, Zion just messed up, man. You can't have two. Something's going to happen, you know? And sure enough, no, no, it blew she was up, and now everybody knows what's she, going she on. She was okay with it to uh, be down with two. Just don't <laughs> get him knocked up. Now, now, Joe was excited earlier. Different story, but, I mean, that whole thing was on Williamson. What do you expect, man? These are athletes, and I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but what I am saying is yeah. I've been around these professional athletes long enough to know that stuff like that goes down. It just goes By down. Way, for the record, I, I don't know. I never knew who Mariah Mills was before this had happened. I, I never heard of that name. I thought it was spelled <laughs> like Mariah Carey, but apparparently it's not. It's with an O. I had to I had to ask I had to text Joe. Joe, with your knowledge, who's Mariah Mills? Because he was <laughs> <laughs> uh so if you're watching this at work, do not search her name. Not oh, don't yeah, yeah, bad, yeah. Idea. Not bad idea. <laughs> don't do it. Bad don't idea. Do but on your maybe your <laughs> cell phone. <laughs> there you go. As long as you're not on the um the yeah, Wi-Fi of your work, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, you don't want to have that in your browser history, man. <laughs> As I clear Shout out, out my browser history. Amanda Nunez, who announced her retirement from UFC. Uh, Joe, you believe she's the goat of female fighters. Explain yourself. I, I believe she is. I mean, she's just had a dominating presence in the UFC, uh, in my opinion. And not only in my opinion, but a lot of other uh, people who follow UFC closely. Uh, she's going to go down as the greatest women's UFC fighter in history. She made her, her or paved her way into UFC by dominating 
and retiring one Ronda Rossi. And you were watching the video of yeah. that fight, 45 yeah. seconds. Yeah, so I was I saw it live when it happened, what, six, seven years ago. Yeah. And Ronda Rousey at that time was the it girl in sports. I oh, mean, yeah. she was up there with Serena Williams. She was up there with every, mm -hmm. you know, Maria Sharapova, all the big yeah. female uh, athletes at the time. And we would, it, Ronda Rousey was the female Mike Tyson. You know, I remember growing up when I was 10, 12, 13 years old, watching Mike Tyson fights. And we would watch him simply because we wanted to know the question, how long is it going to take for Tyson to knock yeah. out this dude? Ronda Rousey was that. Ronda Rousey was somebody who was feared. And Amanda Nunez from Brazil steps into the into the ring, the octagon, if you will, and just completely pummeled her 47 seconds. And I went on the YouTube before the show just to yeah. rewatch it because I wanted to relive the glory. I don't think Rousey landed one punch. No. I mean, Nunez didn't just beat her didn't just annihilate Ronda Rousey. Nunez, like, took away her soul. <laughs> Ronda Rousey hey, was never the same again. She retired. Yeah. Hey, Joe, Joe, let me ask you. Um, I know I, I watched Rousey fights, you know, before, you know, she left the game. I always felt she was a little bit overrated. because She was overrated because what she, they would she, do. She, did, she, didn't, she didn't have a ground game at all. At no. all. Her thing was just. Bull, bulldog her way, bulldoze her way to you, bring the fight to you, and clobber you. That was it. That was it. Until she met her match uh, with the Lioness. And then, you know, the whole story over. Yeah. Uh, but but even, uh, what's her name? Uh, the blonde girl. Uh, Holly Holmes. Minor's daughter. Holly Holmes. Holly Holmes beat her. And Holly Holmes beat her with skill. I don't think R Rousey was a good fighter, but I don't think she'd had the skill set, you know, as maybe a Holmes d d does, and, and, there, and now the Lioness did. Yeah, no, what happened with Ronda Rossi is they would pair her against these other fighters that they knew she could beat easily because everybody right. wanted yeah. to see that Ronda Rossi dominate, mm -hmm. come in and knocking people out probably within 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and that's it. She's like, showing, they're trying to hype her up as a dominating presence, but when she went up against a highly skilled opponent, mm -hmm. it showed a lot of her shortcomings in her game being one of the those is what's her ground right. game. Um, and she would just come in and just, was you know, like stare. She had that stare, but she was. A I don't think I ever seen her game. like really have a like show off a, a, a just a decent ground game when Rousey was fighting. And again, I'm not here to like just rain on her parade. I mean, she, she's one of the best, but yeah, I mean, I think just the level from from Rousey then it shot up from Holmes to, to Nunez, the Lioness. Uh, yeah, maybe not Cyborg, but um, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, even Shashenko has been really good, except, you know, she's Shashenko. lost a couple fights here as of late. So, I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about Thug Rose? With. You're talking about Thug Rose? Yeah, no, no, yeah. She, well, Thug Rose, well, Thug, but I'm Thug saying Thug Shashenko. Is, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah Thug Rose, she's another I, fighter, but uh, she's yeah, she was dominating as well. But uh, yeah, th you know, Thug Rose, everybody loves her, and she comes out yeah. every once in a while to. And I think that, that uh, I think the, another uh, upper comer right now is the uh, the fighter from China. I don't know her name off. The oh, I, I can't name. remember her name, but I know yeah. what you're talking about. She's That's she's a, really there's good. A, there's a Chinese fighter, and she took an L recently. But this this I work out, but I I, I would hate to work out with this girl because like she would probably just wreck me. You know, just <laughs> the strength, the power that she has. Um, God, I don't have that girl's name right now, but she she's she's really good. She took an L recently, but yeah, the women's division it really took a blow with the lioness gone now. So. We'll see he'll step up. Some Yeah, somebody's going to have to step up. And you know what? You have to give a shout-out, though, to Rossi because if it wasn't for Ronda Rossi, she right. is she single-handedly put the women's division she did. in yep. prime time. You know, that's when it became where she, that was the draw. You know, that was going to be your, your premier fight of the night. Mm -hmm. And because of what she was able to do, now you're having these featured fights like this Nunez mm -hmm. fight that just occurred where she went ahead and retired. That was the fight of the night. You know, that was the headliner. So right. I think Ronda did a lot uh, for the women's division, but I mean, there's not going to be a dominating presence, I think, such as Nunez for quite some time. And, you know, hat, you know, I gave her a, a tip of the hat because Nunez is going out as a champion. She has two belts and she's leaving for the right reason. She's going to go and be a mom, raise her kid with her partner 
And I believe they're going to go ahead and welcome another child as well. So mm. she's retiring for all the, the, the good reasons, you know, being a parent and spending time with your kids while they're still young. And she's already accomplished so many things. So right. I wish her nothing but the best and look forward to what she does with her family in the future. All I got out of that conversation was uh, Jeff Garcia saying she would wreck me. And I just held him alive. <laughs> I put just that on loop. Put that, put that on loop. <laughs> and he met, us. She, he met us. She would humble me. She would humble me. Dude, that's your <laughs> phrase right there. That is your phrase. That's my right phrase. There. Yeah, humble. You know what? One time when I was growing up, I was in high school or college or something like that. Yeah. And my friends and I, we'd be, we'd be walking around the mall, whether it be Ingram Park Mall or River Center. And if we saw a girl that we thought was attractive, we would say a player's name and it'd be a corresponding jersey. Like if, like if we said uh, John Elway, that, that's our way of saying she uh, was a seven, right? Yeah. Uh, Mookie Blaylock was a 10, right? And one day we were doing that. And I'll never forget, like we did that for like a year or two. And this one girl turned around and goes, are you rating us based on jersey numbers? Oh, she saw, <laughs> she saw right through it. That's crazy. She, she, she called you out. Us. Bust she busted you. Hey, congratulations. I know, I know, no one cares. No one cares. But Novak Djokovic became the GOAT yesterday in men's tennis. His 23rd Grand Slam won the French Open on his, on his way to Wimbledon. And I thought about it. I was like, what a great weekend or a great week if you're from Serbia and have the nickname of Joker. Because Nikola Jokic is known as Joker in the NBA. Novak Djokovic is known as Joker on the tennis mm -hmm. tour. I'm a big fan of Djokovic, by the way, the tennis Djokovic. He's amazing. And he's the first player in men's history to ever win all three major, all four majors at least three times each. Very, very, very cool. Real fast before we wrap things up. I was at Diversions the other day on San Pedro. Oh, my Pedro. God. I haven't heard that in years. Wow. Okay. I took my daughter and my son over there. Yeah. And my little ones. And we went over there not knowing that it was even open anymore. And San Pedro and 410 area, kind of like where uh, old, San Francisco, old San Francisco Steakhouse yeah. was. So I didn't yeah. go this past weekend. I went the weekend before. And I tell you what, when you're in town, Jeff, we're going to have to go over there and throw down $10 because that $10 will last us a good God, hour and a half. I always, and, I always liked it when you would, you would put the money in the, uh, in the token exchanger. And yeah, you feel like you hit the you feel like you hit the jackpot like in Vegas. Oh, I know. Even though it's the same money coming back. Like, I want to, look at all the games I can play. It's funny how arcades teach kids how to bundle shop. You know, like 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 yeah. going to Costco for, exactly. for bulk shopping because it's like, okay, let me get this straight. I get four tokens for a dollar. Four tokens for a dollar. Yeah. But I get twenty five tokens for five dollars. Yeah. That's yeah, like that a twenty percent off. And then you get see, all you excited see, see, about it. Video games teach math, everybody, and how to shop. Yeah. And shop. See, there, there's so many benefits to this. If you get but, Jeff, uh, if you get Jeff to go to diversions, I know he don't want no smoke on Street Fighter or, or NBA yeah, Jam. You no. don't want none of that. You don't, oh, you don't want this. An, they you don't have want NBA this. Over there. Yeah, he don't want you don't, none of you that. You still don't want this. <laughs> you don't want it, dude. He don't want it. We'll have to take video to show uh, just how bad Jeff's going to get beaten. We'll post it out, out on social yeah, media. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he meant it's going to bring 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 me the smoke, so I'll probably get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of comments on Facebook, by the way. Again, we are broadcasting right now on Facebook and on Twitter. Tomorrow, we're going to figure it out. We had, a, we had a little bit of a glitch when it came to YouTube, uh, but we had a little bit of a glitch. Uh, a couple of things, uh, several comments. Uh, Dylan reaches out and says, Joker is the best player right now. But stop this crap of Joker being next to Duncan or Shaq. Also, Denver wins tonight. Uh, okay, didn't say that he was up to Duncan. Never will. Duncan's a top five great of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, but to Shaq? No, no, no. I always still want to go there. He meant, don't bob your head like that. Uh, nope. I'm going to get off the stream now. <laughs> yeah, get out, get out of here, Joe. Get out I'm of here. Saying the, the, I'm saying the man's going to get there. dragged right now. If he's going to get there. He'll be two years away from that. He will get there. I don't know. Well, okay, we'll see. It's just for me the defense of Blackie. He doesn't have defense. And Shaq did, and Robinson did, and Dream did, and Duncan did. Mario reaches out to us on Facebook and says, if Wemby's ceiling is equal to David Robinson, I'll even take that 100% of the time. Sure. Sure. 
Yeah. Okay, I want him to be better than David Robinson. David Robinson is still a great player, but yeah, you're you're, uh, you're giving me crap for about dang. What about you? It seems like you're you're not too much of a fan of Robinson. I love David Robinson, dude. Okay, if okay. David Rob David Robinson was playing in the wrong era. David oh, Robinson sure. right now yeah. would have been would be a top three player. You yeah. transport 1992 Absolutely. David Robinson to 2023, he's a top three player along Nobody with Joker and Giannis. Stopping him. Nobody stopped him. Yo, not at all. And and that's why I get so excited about Victor Women Yamas because everyone's saying, Oh, he's like Kevin, he's like Kevin uh Durant and all that stuff. But the more you look at him, he's more David Robinson. He's yeah. more David Robinson, he's more Kevin Garnett than he is Kevin Durant. It's a weird thing that, that he's coming on over here. It's 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 kind of bizarre. Uh Gabe reaches out to us and says, uh, I was waiting in on YouTube. Knew that you probably had technical issues. I should have started on Facebook, but I do like the new setting. That's very cool. Props to Joe for that. Yeah, thanks. Good job, Joe. Um, Anthony reaches out and says, you got to go with Mills. Chris Chris Paul used to be a dog, but he's more like an old yeller now. <laughs> <laughs> Mario reaches out and says, Ronda Rousey broke a few arms with her arm bar. Remember that? I remember oh, yeah. that. But again, it's the quality of fire that she was going up against. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Just but and then compared her to the to the newer breed, like uh, yeah. Nunez and other things. She's she's still behind them. Okay, so what we've learned today is that moral of the story, because the last comment was asking about ranking girls based on jersey numbers. Who was Warren uh -oh. Moon, which was number one? <laughs> uh, no, we never went that far. We only brought up the conversation when it was John Elway or higher. You had to be John Elway. I think wow. eight, eight was was uh, was wasn't that uh, Troy Aikman? Yeah, eight. Yeah, I can't I can't remember who nine was. Who was nine? Who's a good nine from the nineties? Nine jersey numbers from yeah. the nineties. Any any league? Yeah. Uh, you got me on that one. Um, I was say Tony Parker, but Tony Parker was two thousands. That's true. Yeah, that's Tony true. Was yeah. It's so uh, yeah, funny. I'm stumped on this one. Yeah, I, I'm stumped on that one. I can't I can't remember that one, but we, we used to have it. There was no 11, though. It, it just went up to Mookie Blaylock, and uh, it was so funny getting busted. I, I remember that was, at, that was at River Center Mall. I'll never forget. It was at River Center Mall, and so the girl just looked back and just got all pissed off at us. You know who was a good nine from the, from the NFL on their jersey? It was uh, Air McNair. Remember Steve McNair? That might have been it, dude. Yeah. That might have been it. Joe, you played this game, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Might have a couple times. <laughs> this has been a fun episode. It really has been. We're, we're about an hour in. We should wrap things up. Uh, but just to kind of summarize what we're trying to do here, for those of you who are, are, are new to this, uh, my name is Mike Jimenez, and uh, we're trying to figure this out and create a network and kind of disturb the market a little bit, disrupt the market, if you will. Uh, because what we want to do is create a network of programming uh, to fill in the gaps because local radio goes off the air from at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. now. Ticket 760, San Antonio Sports Star, no longer have local programming, and people want to have local programming at all times. And this is an opportunity for us to get this going. We're going to be doing this Monday through Friday from 12 to 1. Uh, I would say that probably within the next 30 days, expand to a two-hour format. And beyond that, uh, might incorporate something in for a morning show. And this is an opportunity for people to reach out to us and and let us know your vision. What, what do you guys want to see? Uh, because it's not about us. It's about the viewers. And keep in mind, uh, I'm going to want to have some sessions there, some some happy hours or maybe a dinner for people who are interested in learning more. Uh, if you want to sponsor, reach out to us as well because uh, sponsorships, you know, it pays the bills and gets things going. Uh, but this is a great opportunity for a lot of people. We're really excited about this whole venture that we're on. Uh, we, we're going to be doing a fantasy show on Sundays from 11 yeah. to noon, beginning the first Sunday of August. I'm very excited about all this. And Jeff Garcia, Locked on Spurs, follow him on Locked on Spurs. I follow him on Spotify. That's how I listen daily. How else can, Joe, can hey, people Joe's get Joe's going to be on tomorrow's Lockdown Spurs, by the way. Who's that? Joe. Joe's on Yo, tomorrow's yeah. Lockdown Spurs. Oh, very nice. Very yeah. nice. How else can people follow you, Je uh, Jeff? Well, yeah, the main the main way is the, the Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. 
Um, and then, of course, Locked On Spurs YouTube page. I mean, pick a platform. It's there. Ken's 5 Plus app, Ken's 5.com. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, but, you know, what they also we learned, too, I'm surprised he minutes didn't say anything, is that I actually know other sport outside of the Spurs in the NBA, the MMA stuff. I was waiting for you to be like, yeah, I was. I learned impressed. that Jeff has knows more stuff than the NBA too. No, I, I'm I'm pretty impressed. I thought you were all basketball and Marvel. No, no, and that's actually that my. Bit. That's actually my second favorite sport is combat sports. That's my favorite boxing, your MMA's, uh, wrestling. I mean, if if my Twitter nerd page didn't reveal that, I don't. And then here it is. You know, I've, I've always been a big combat sports fight. And why? Why? Because of my grandpa, my grandfather before he passed away. He would uh, watch bo boxing matches with me, and he would like force me to watch it. And eventually, I got into it, and then that's how I came fell in love with the sport. Um, but um, but one thing about the, the tennis segment you have right now with um, what was the guy's name again? Novak Djokovic. Uh, Djokovic. I, I'm surprised you didn't challenge him. We've seen your tennis videos and your backhand, uh, Jimenez. We've seen. I that. used to be pretty decent. I never I never said good. I used to be pretty damn decent. <laughs> I want to get back into it. Yeah, I want to get back into it. I'm afraid of doing high school basketball refereeing, though. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about coming back and 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 coming out of retirement and refereeing JV and varsity again this year. San Antonio just takes nachos to uh, grease the wheels. Wink, wink. If you know what I mean. He I just told me that it just takes some nachos. Jeff Garcia, thanks for being on with us today. This yes, has sir. been fun. You know, we're going to. Be doing this Monday through Friday, starting uh, well, starting today, but from noon to one. Uh, anybody have any comments? Reach out to us as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube page as well. MJ Acquired Taste. This was a great first episode. I promise I'm going to rest my voice, and I'm not going to drown it in any more Buffalo Trace. I didn't have that much. I just yeah. had one drink. I wanted you to have more, but allegedly you did one. Allegedly, I wanted you to have more. I wanted to see something have fun happen, but okay, maybe next time. Yeah, you've seen not like that the time already. I had to. That like the, yeah, yeah, and you duped me to driving you all the way back to your house. You oh, that's one. right, <laughs> that's right, all the way from Southtown, all the way to West Bear County, sucker, <laughs> sucker. You got me good, dude. You got you dragged me. You're that like, time. how far is this? No, I was I was passing the Ingram Park Mall, and you were still on your cell phone, just perusing, and like, what did he? And I said, yeah, man, was over there saying, no, how much longer? That I was like, haircut. how much? <laughs> yeah, I was like. How much longer do we have to go? And he's like, oh, we're almost there. <laughs> Ten minutes later. How much longer? Oh, we're almost there. I'm like, God damn. That is awesome. Jeff Garcia, thanks for being the first guest. Yes, sir. Joe, thank you so much for setting this all up. This has been amazing. It's been a great time. We'll be back tomorrow at noon. Y'all take care. Yeah, peace.